Hi there, Lori and Bonnie. Lori, I'm sorry it's gloomy where you are. It's a uh, beautiful, crisp day here in central Ohio on what is today, so September 23rd. So happy Friday and more importantly, happy fall. Um, how many of you are, are ready for fall? Now, how many of you are hanging on to summer? <laughs> okay, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm like, um, I'm a shorts and long sleeve um, kind of girl right now in early fall. Um, so I'm ready for fall weather. I've got my fire pit ready, whatever. But I went to Target this morning to pick up a few things. And I just started noticing some people were really bundled up. Some were maybe like me, shorts and a long sleeve t-shirt or jeans and a t-shirt. And then there were a couple people who actually um, were in shorts and flip flops and um, what do I say? Um, you know, little, little tops, lightweight tops. And um, it just kind of cracked me up. So you could tell who's ready for fall and who's hanging on to summer. But anyways, I'm, I'm happy it's fall. I love the colors, the, the crisp air, the sm even the smells of the leaves and things. After this Facebook Live, I'm going to be going to work out in my yard, do some fall cleanup and mow and things like that. Um, I have a really fun Facebook Live today. Um, I'm super excited about this. And I was making samples and I got a little carried away, but um, I think you're really going to love it. Uh, before we get to that though, I just wanna put out a reminder that um, yesterday, a new set of weekly deals was announced by Stampin' Up. Um, this is the last set of the September weekly deals. These will end next Wednesday. And I'll just tell you my favorites on here are the matte black dots, the, um, and then the next two I think are wonderful for holiday crafting, the gold shimmer ribbon and the, I need to put my glasses on, the festive foils 12 by 12 specialty DSP. Those are my top three favorites for this one. Um, something else on here though, Soft succulent ribbon, I use that tons. You, I'm sure you've seen me use it tons. And also there is a Stampin' Up! Abigail Rose poster. Um, love what you do, share what you love. And I did get that when that came out as part of our um, new merchandise, branded merchandise. And I bought an inexpensive frame from Hobby Lobby when it was on sale. And I have it up in my craft room. So... Those are my favorites for the weekly deals. Um, also a reminder that the T Boutique Class to Go registration is still happening now. So you can, um, here's one of them. I'm trying to think which ones I haven't shown you yet. And there's another. You're gonna make 10 different cards with that class. They are bright, they're cheerful, they're fun. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy it. So information on both of those things is here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nave. Went out in my email newsletters and you can find it on my blog, stampinpeace.com. So now it's time to switch my camera so we can get started with today's creative demonstration. While I'm doing that, please invite others to join us by sharing this live video. And I'm just going to plug my phone into my computer just in case so I don't run out of power. Okay, that looks pretty good. So as you can see, I've pulled out some wonderful fall colors. K 
Cajun Craze, Crushed Curry, Pear Pizzazz, Mossy Meadow, and Crumb Cake. And I know some of these, like Pear Pizzazz, you might think of that as a spring color. But I think you're really going to like how it works well with these others. And today we'll be using the Soft Seedlings stamp set, my favorite for fall. So let's get started. I'm going to open all of these up and turn them this way. So I've got Cajun Craze, Crush Curry, Pear Pizzazz. I just got my finger in that. Let me wipe that off. Mossy Meadow and Crumb Cake. And of course, there's no um, right or wrong to this. You know, I'm gonna scoot things over just a bit. Sure, I'm going in the right direction. Let me scoot this over. And for this, you definitely do want to have um, some scrap paper, some grid paper, something um, that you can um, stamp onto. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time getting this straight today. And crumb cake will be my last one. So I'm going to start with a piece of basic white cardstock and we I am going to show you how to make your own designer series paper. By the time we finish this, I think you are just going to be um, blown away at how beautiful this is. And I will say too that, let me push this, you are going to be stamping off of the cardstock, so that's why you want that grid paper. Um, and the other thing is you choose the colors that work for you. And maybe you don't want to do leaves. Maybe you want to do flowers or um, something else. Pick the colors that are going to work for you in the project that you're doing. So I'm going to start with Cajun Craze. I will say for this stamp set, you can see how much detail is in here and the stamp set is designed so that you're going to get more color on some areas and less color on others, okay? So you don't need to press real hard. You don't need to really um, soak this. If you get too much ink on this type of stamp, um, it ends up being kind of blotchy. Now that looks pretty good. I'll also tell you, um, now, I don't need to, and you can test it out on your scrap paper. Maybe stamp on the scrap paper first. But if it's too juicy, which this one is not, you just scrape it with the back of a plastic spoon or old credit card, something like that, and move the ink to the sides. So I'm going to stamp this about five times. And, of course, how many times you stamp it will depend on the size of your image, the size of your paper you're using. But I noticed in the samples that I was making that five per color seemed a good way to start. Now for this, because I am using the same stamp over and over and over again, I do want to clean it off before I switch colors. So I'm just tapping it into my Simply Chamois, and then I'll move on to the Crush Curry color. And again, I'm going to stamp about five times. There's really not a right or wrong. Just whatever feels good to you. You want to turn that stamp. So turning the stamp and stamping off the paper is how we make it look um, random, which is kind of what you're going for when you're doing 
this type of make your own designer series paper. Once again, clean off your stamp. I'm going to stamp with my pear pizzazz. I'm checking to make sure I don't have too much ink that it, my ink pad's not too juicy. So there's one, two, three. You can turn your stamp and turn your paper however it works out for you. Put a little over here. And then finally, I'm stamping with Mossy Meadow. Let's see, I need one more. I think I'll go over here. And I feel like we might need a little something right in there as well. Okay, now that looks pretty good to me. I like to look at my edges too to see, um, do I have bits of ink all the way around? showing that they're going off the paper, just tiny bits, maybe on that little corner. And I would say I'm finished with that large stamp. Now I'm going to use my Crush Curry and I'm going to um, stamp some of these little seed pods. This is not Crush Curry, Crumb Cake, <laughs> Crumb Cake. Um, I don't know, what do you guys call these? I guess they're seed pods, right, off maple trees. When we were kids, though, we used to call them helicopters. You know, they'd be all over the driveway and the sidewalk, all dried up. And um, we would throw them up in the air, like especially if we were went on the school bus or something. We'd throw them up in the air, and they would come down like helicopter propellers, we thought. Or... Fun memory. And I'm just stamping this randomly throughout, just wherever I think there's a little more white space than I want. Be sure to turn that stamp different directions. Again, just do as much or as little as you want. really just your personal preference and you know I think I'm gonna go down here too and we're going to now this is um, a cardstock that I started with is a full sheet of eight and a half by eleven cardstock. And we're actually going to make five cards with this. So you're going to really get some nice cards out of all of this effort. I notice I just keep adding a little more. Just again, just take a look, stand back, take it all in and decide if you want a little more or if you're ready to say stop. Now, before I show you how to cut this to make the five cards, I wanna show you one more step. And this is what I call splattering. Some of you may already know how to do this. I've done this on occasion. Um, 
on different Facebook Lives and different projects. This is the easiest way I find to do this. Now you can do this technique with your Stampin' Write markers, but for me, I think it's easiest to use the Stampin' Blends. So get a pair of Stampin' Blends out. I wanna use the darkest color. Again, it's your personal preference, but I'm using dark soft suede. I'm going to hold it kind of close to the paper. And I'm just going to hit the open Stampin' Blend with the closed Stampin' Blend. Again, you wanna make sure you're working on scrap paper or the grid paper like I'm using. Okay, and I think that looks pretty good. I'm not sure, let me hold this up so you can get a better look at this. Can you see the splatter throughout? Okay. And notice too, when I stamped and when I did the splatter, I didn't worry about things overlapping. I think it looks prettier and looks more random when things are overlapped like that. Okay, I'm going to show you how to cut this cardstock to make five cards. But before I do that, I want to close up these ink pads so I don't end up with a disaster. By the way, on my blog, stampinpeace.com, there is a, um, a free Friday download that posted today. Patricia, you like the splatter technique? You know, isn't it funny? Something so simple, such an easy technique can um, really add something of great value to your project. All right, now I have, again, five and eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock, and I wanna get five cards out of this. I don't know why my camera is so wonky today. I wanna get five cards out of this. So let me show you how to cut this to get five cards and maximize this. Yes, Cindy, it's another form of a one sheet wonder. But all the basically all the cards will end up being the same. So I'm going to start at four and three quarters. And I'm going to cut pieces that are four and three quarters. Why am I? By three and a half. Four and three quarters by three and a half. You'll also find that there's very little waste with this. And I'm going to hang on to this because you never know. I might use it. So there's three. So I'm doing four and three quarters by three and a half. So I'm gonna cut this piece down to the three and a half inch width. Again, I'll keep this, maybe I wanna do something with that, I don't know. And then cut this long one at four and three quarters also. And this will give me the additional two. And again, now that's a fun piece. I feel like I need to do something with that. That would even be a cute tag. You know, maybe make the top pretty, do a, a cute tag and put it on a um, browned gift bag. Now I also want to put a layer of cardstock behind here. I'm choosing to use soft suede, which was not one of the ink colors I chose, but it works really nicely with all of the colors I've chosen. I can cut this piece of cardstock, also eight and a half by 11, in pretty much the same manner if I just do an, um, an eighth inch measurement higher. So um, remember these were four and three quarters by three and a half. So I'm going to go four and seven eighths by three and five eighths and cutting it like this, what did I say, three and five eighths. Cutting it like this, you will still get 
five pieces. of cardstock and they will be just slightly larger. So this will be three and five eighths, which look at that. That's exactly what this is basically. I'm off by a smidgen. By four and seven eighths. And the only bit of waste I have from that uh, is this. Kathy, this is not DSP. This is, we made our own DSP. So if you're just jumping on, you'll want to go back to the beginning of the video um, afterwards and watch from the start because I show you how to make this DSP. But you know what? I love that you asked that question since you jumped on late because that tells me I got the exact effect I wanted from this technique, and that is to create my own designer series paper. And that's what I want. I want it to look like I purchased this as designer series paper, all right? But in fact, I made my own. So I'm going to take all of these pieces. Of course, you could make these any size you want but I thought I'm going to show it to you this way with these measurements showing you how you can um hey no reason to apologize Kathy I'm just letting you know just letting you know that you'll want to watch from the very beginning when you have a chance everybody's busy right and you know it's so pretty in central Ohio today, beautiful day. Um, I will be getting out to do some yard work in a little while, but I thought to myself, oh gosh, I hope people get on. If everybody has weather as nice as this is here today, is anybody gonna join me? But I'm so happy to know that some of you are here and joining me. And And then I'm going to, I've got five card bases in crumb cake because I wanted something real neutral, but any of the colors that are in here would work great. I mean, you could, let's see, let's pull out a couple just to show you. But here's Cajun Craze. See? Um, what else? Any of, you know, any of them. Honestly, the Crush Curry. There's Crush Curry with it. I guess it depends. Would you like it more subtle? Or would you like it more bright? Or more sub, maybe more subdued with the um, Mossy Meadow color? That Mossy Meadow is one of my favorite greens. We really have some incredible greens going on right now. Let's see? So just pick whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you happy. And let me add this, add your layers. Do all of you have a bone folder? That is a very handy tool to have. It just gives your cards an extra nice crease. All of those folds or um, any of your 3D projects. Anytime you have score lines, it really just helps give your 
folds a cleaner, crisper look. Oops, am I out? Almost. Now something I wanna point out to you right here, you can make vertical cards or you can make horizontal cards. It can be whichever direction you want. Doris, we do have a lot of um, holiday stamps that you can um, use for this technique. All right, now, where's my little, oh, here it is. Okay, you know the old adage, work smarter, not harder. Here's a perfect example of this. Why this just came to me today and not before, I'm not sure. But oftentimes, you know, I'll cut out just, you know, a couple labels or banners and to use right then and there. And today I thought, okay, this is ridiculous. Why am I cutting out a couple at a time? Why don't I lay all four of these banner pieces out and run them through my stamp and cut them in boss sheet all at once, right? I don't know why that was like, why did it take me all this time to learn that or think of that? Um, you know, if I'm doing multiple, sure. But I thought, no, it would be nice to just have a stash of banners. And another one I thought of is the tailored tag dies. I'm going to do the same thing for that. Put all the dies in and um, run it through with very vanilla whisper or a basic white um, crumb cake. The very neutral things that I know I would use a lot. Okay. And then I'm going to find a bin that has little compartments and stick them all in there. All right, Jenny, um, the name of this die set is Stylish Shapes Dies, Stylish Shapes Dies, and I use it a lot. It's in the annual catalog. So I have all these, and I'm just going to pull some sentiments from my set. By the way, I will give away all of these cards. So you want to hang on to the end. And I think I'm going to stamp with early espresso. Again, not a color, not an ink I already used, but one that will work very well with the autumn colors I've chosen. There's one. Um, I send a lot of thinking of you cards. Anybody else? Oops. Too many things happen in here. Sometimes it is easier to stamp first and then die cut or punch, but I like that one, so grateful. Um, but sometimes it's just really efficient to have a bunch of your um, little banners or labels cut out, tags, so that you can just grab them and use what's needed. Oh, these might be the cards I send out to wish people happy Thanksgiving, because I really like this. And you know, stay with me to the end, because I have um, one more similar but different DSP I want to show you that I made with the soft seedlings stamp set. All right, I'm going to add these, of course, you know what I'm gonna say, with dimensionals. I need to open up another package of regular size dimensionals, but these will work, All right? Oops. All 
Okay, is this a technique you would try? Okay, and Doris had that question of um, Christmas stamps that we might recommend for the same technique. Anybody have an idea they want to throw out? I'm going to do it like this. Again, you can make your cards horizontal or vertical. I'm thinking um, maybe the boughs of holly. Uh, yes, some of the trees, absolutely. Um, what else? Give me a couple minutes to think about that. And we'll do a little bit of embellishing. On these as well. Some type of ornament. I was thinking of that, but off the top of my head, I can't think. I feel like there is a stamp set with small ornaments, maybe. Something with evergreens and berries, anything like that. Poinsettias. <gasps> Yes, and I think the poinsettia set was carried over, so it you'll find it in the annual catalog. Oh, that would be beautiful. That, of course, I'm kind of a sucker for poinsettias. I love them. Okay, so there are my cards. Five cards, quick and easy, right? Half hour, and that's a half hour with giving instruction, too. Um, okay, I'm thinking for this... Oh, wait, we could add, not sure about this one. This might be a little too, yeah, I think that might be a little thick for a bow. If I can find the end. Well, well, we won't be doing that. To, oh, here it is. Here's the end. Let's just see it. This I'm thinking is probably a little thick for a bow on a card. Yeah, I feel like that's, I think it would look neat, but I think it's just a little much. I think this would be nice for wrapping a small package or maybe um, treat favors, gift bags, things like that. Um, I wanna give you some, show you some other options. This I think would be a great option this is the natural woven ribbon. This is soft like gauze, like kind of like a medical gauze would feel. Obviously it's not that, but this makes a really nice bow and because it's so thin and soft, um, does not create a lot of bulk like that jute I just showed you. Let's make a couple of these. Linen thread is always a good choice for a little bit of embellishing. I don't want to overdo um, Denise, you're funny, you bling everything. <laughs> it seems like most of my followers do. Yeah, Cindy, that's what I was thinking, that that twine would be, um, that jute would be too bulky. You could send it, but you'd have to put on extra postage, whereas something like this, you wouldn't need extra postage. a little bigger than I want. Notice that when I make my bows, I kind of play with them a while. And I kind of 
pull and twist until it's the size that I want. Bows don't always turn out perfectly the first time. Just give yourself a little patience and grace and kind of play with them. All right, so I'm going to add this to the Thinking of You cards. I find that the multi or the uh, mini glue dots are the easiest way to add your bows. Just press the back of the knot onto a mini glue dot and pull it off. Okay. And this, I'm thinking we're just gonna make a simple bow on these with the linen thread. It'll be kind of big and loopy. And because the knot is so small on here, I'm just going to use a dot of multi-purpose glue, drop the bow on there so that the, the, the uh, the knot is going to sit right on that drop. And then I like to just put a, it's moving on me, put a clear block over the top of it until it dries. All right, that way you can go on, do your creating and not have to hold that until the glue dries. Kathy, you're right, there's a lot of good um, choices in that Essentials Baker's Twine pack. And those are just a tiny bit thicker than the linen thread, but really good choices. In fact, I think I need to order some more of that. I'm going to do the same thing here a single drop of glue, put that in place, and then put one of my clear blocks over it or anything that you have handy. I have lots and lots of clear blocks, so I have multiples of each size just because of having done classes in my, in my home, um, make and takes at my creative escape weekend, things like that where I needed lots to accommodate a large number of people stamping. And I'm just gonna give these a moment to dry while I show you another example of the make your own um, DSP using the same stamps. And this is it. Now this one I'm thinking more maybe like spring or summer, right? Because it has shades of green. Now the little helicopter seed seedlings, um, I know those are something that drop, do they drop in the fall or spring? I'm thinking in the fall. Now I'm questioning myself. I'll have to pay attention on my walk later, <laughs> see if I see any. Um, but I did the same thing. I And this time I only chose two colors of green, um, Pear Pizzazz and Mossy Meadow. I used Crumb Cake again for the seedlings. And then, I hope you can see this on film. I did the splattering technique on here, but I used Cajun Craze Dark Stampin' Blend. I think you can see that pretty good. But same technique, I can make the, all the same cards with this five per sheet using those cutting dimensions I gave you. Um, four and three quarters by three and a half for the make your own DSP, we'll call it. And then the layer behind it, again, five pieces to a sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. So they're cut to four and seven eighths by three and five eighths. All right. 
Okay, I want to hear who will be trying this technique. Who will be making their own designer series paper? Okay, let yourself go wild. Let yourself have fun. Um, oh, Lori, you are so welcome. I'm glad you like it. Okay, so I have five cards to give away today. Um, <clears throat> if you would like to receive one of these cards, please type in the comments now, soft seedlings, soft seedlings. Okay, and then just very quickly, because Doris asked, I think it was Doris asked, um, you know, I'm going to move these because the glue is still drying a little bit on those, and I don't want anything to happen to those cards. Um, <clears throat> let's just run through our holiday catalog and see if we can come up with some. Oh, right there, Doris and others who are looking for perhaps doing the same technique, but for the holidays, the candy canes and the leaf, I think that would be amazing. Here you've got some greenery. Those are smaller stamps. So depending on, on the size of the images, you'll stamp more or less. <clears throat> oh, here's some. This would be good. <clears throat> here's those ornaments. I think Lori brought that up. Um, what else? Snowflakes are fabulous. Snowflakes are fabulous for um, making your own uh, designer series paper. You can do different shades of blue or maybe some blue and a little Highland Heather, something like that, or Fresh Freesia. Um, here's the poinsettias and the holly I, and the um, evergreen. I think this would work great for making your own DSP. Here's the holly leaves that I originally was talking about, the holly and the berries. That would be a fun DSP to make. Um, some of you might have, ooh, okay, this could be a fun DSP. It doesn't even have to be holiday, but this could be a fun DSP to use. The little Scotty dog. Perhaps some of the trees. These could work. The pumpkins could work. You're going to do some coloring in. Here's a nice leaf. So, you know, just take a look around. Use your imagination. <clears throat> and um, give the technique a try. But I'm sure you can find some in here, but also even more. Oh, the mittens would not. Oh, that would be so cute. I don't have this set. But I think the mittens would be darling. And the pumpkin, or not the pumpkin. Why did I say pumpkin? The balloon would be darling also. Birthday cards, winter cards, doing them in different colors. I think that would make a really cute DSP. So as you can see, you can just run through the um, holiday catalog or the annual catalog and pick out some various stamps that you think would work well for DSP. And you can even try them out on maybe a smaller piece of cardstock before you do um, do it on a larger 8.5 by 11 cardstock. You can even do it on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, right? And do a different one sheet wonder using that 12 by 12. And e two easy one sheet wonders are to cut, well, three really. Um, cut your 12 by 12 into three by three squares or four by four squares or three inch by four inch rectangles. Those are all super easy. Um, and then you could make even more cards with a sheet of 12 by 12 of your own handmade designer series paper. All right, that's all I have for you on this 
Friday, September 23rd afternoon. I thank you for being with me. Um, if you have any questions about this technique, Stampin' Up! products, anything I can help you with, please do contact me. And if you are in need of a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be yours. I would love to earn your business. Contact me. I'm happy to send you a complimentary catalog um, or do whatever I can to um, earn your business. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on Monday at 2 p.m. And no, 4 p.m., right? Why do I have 2 p.m. on there? That's supposed to be 4 p.m. Gosh, and I've been doing 4 p.m. on Mondays. So I don't know why I have two there. So it'll be 4 p.m. on Monday. And that is that is the right time, 4 p.m. on Monday, Eastern time. And um, have a great weekend.